purpose of this space is to create a very safe environment for people to share a moment of their lives. Winston Young, I am your host for tonight, and I was given back this mic that I handed out uh, last October, and then pieces fell together to create this show that you are at right now. Uh, to give you a bit of insight as to what, what the show is about, I grew up with a massive dysfunctional belief that I needed permission to speak. And it kind of looked like this. You know, someone would be sitting there, and you just stand very attentively waiting for your moment. And they would be annoyed that you're standing there waiting for a moment. You get your moment, and then they just sit back and said, OK, so I uh, know that you've been waiting, so uh, talk. And I'm sure you would understand at that moment, in your mind, you're like, well, you're not really listening to what I have to say. And then you don't say it. And then that little voice that you have just gets smaller and smaller and smaller and disappears. And then you grow into an adult. And then you want your voice to be heard. And you severely overcompensate. And I overcompensated in the way of wanting to be that guy that everyone shot in a photograph, wanted to be. Want, it's, it's like it, you wanted that superstardom. And I didn't understand. I actually achieved that until someone came up to me and said, Winston, why do you always need to be photographed with whomever that may be? To me, that was just normal until I finally started doing some personal development work and realized that all that was born from this belief that I needed permission to speak and that no one was listening. And if they wanted to listen, no one really cared. So I just kept that message inside of me. So the purpose of this space is to create a very safe environment for people to share a moment of their lives. There's no theme involved. The people that come up here have selected a story on their own. And they're going to share it with us to connect your heart to their heart, to create a connection and to create community within this space, and then have it grow as the shows go on. seven days a week, located at the south end of the Petula Bridge at 12375 King George Boulevard in Surrey. Foodie World has 75,000 square feet of imported and domestic products, with a large selection dedicated to our Filipino kababayans, with an in-house butcher, variety of seafood, and produce from around the globe. Open every day until midnight, Foodie World, one block east of number three road off Sea Island Way in Richmond. Located one block north of St. Paul's Hospital, Downtown Denture Center features complete and partial teeth restoration options. With 35 years experience, Anthony Chung offers mobile services and emergency repair consultation 24 hours a day. Downtown Denture Center, just off Nelson at 970 Burrard in the lobby of the Electra Building. So 72 hours ago, um, as I'm preparing for this show, an individual decided that this show should not exist. So instead of speaking to me about it and working things out, uh, they chose to take a plan of action through fear and intimidation and have my speakers uh, pull out by scaring them with untruth and it really bothered me because I know if someone wants to not like me, that's perfectly fine. I know a whole bunch of people on this planet that hate my guts, right? And I'm used to it. But if the issue was with me, then speak to me. You don't have to go and involve people that 
are not directly involved. And the part that really pained me was when I got an update from speakers that were contacted and it ruined their day. It caused them psychological and emotional stress. And it carried on for the next couple of days. And it really bugged me that instead of dealing it as like an adult, they have chosen to take a course of action that I just define as being a bully, using fear and intimidation to get what they want because they fear <laughs> they fear that you're doing something they don't want to do. They are losing control of you, and the only way to get control is to go and sabotage what, you, what you're trying to create. So with that being said, I looked at the, my whole purpose of this, and it galvanized my resolve that this space needs to exist. Here's someone that goes, I don't want you to speak. Who is trying to scare someone into not sharing their message, into being silent. And by doing so, withholding a moment of their lives that they're gifting to other people. And I go, that's just, that's not right. And by looking at this, I go, you know what? Everything that you have done has proven to me that this has to happen. So it's happening, and that's why we're all here. And I thank you for coming to support this night. So now that I got that out of the way, I feel a lot better. <laughs> and before I put uh, my infamous party hat on, I'm going to uh, put out a few announcements. Uh, there is photography and video recording allowed, but I do ask that you refrain from doing it for the sole purpose that these people coming on stage are freaked out enough and they don't need a camera. <laughs> recording them as they move around. And if you do take a picture, please turn off the flash so you don't distract them. And they lose their train of thought. The second thing is a trigger warning. Uh, all of the stories are personal in nature and some of them might encroach on very dark topics of abuse, addiction, uh, self-harm things that might trigger you. So if you get triggered and you need a timeout, there's a beautiful lounge at the back and around the corner. You can go there, give yourself a timeout. Okay, so I'm gonna put this hat on. So give me a second to put this hat on and we'll get the show started. Okay. Yay, now we can get going. So I mentioned the in, in the opening about standing up to bullying, standing up to people that don't want you to do something because either they're jealous of you or they're afraid of you. And the only way they, they can is to undermine, it's to, to circumvent you because they're afraid of you and to circumvent you and to go and knock you down. And I grew up with that. Like I grew up in a world where, well, well, to be blunt, it was racist, and I didn't have a support network. I was one of four Asian kids in the high school, and to constantly walk into a room and have people say, what are you doing in here? You don't belong in here. What are you sitting in the front of the class for? Just, just go away. Just go hide. You don't, you don't deserve to be here. Growing up in that type of environment, it, 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 it wears on you. But if you don't have any way of letting it out, you start believing that this is true. You start believing that this is how life is. And so, so it became that way. You, know, you grow up, you get used to it, you build up a thicker skin. But in the back of my mind, it never went away. And as I look back now on my glorious life and just see how twisted and demented I truly became, it took a lot of work to undo all that work. But by doing so, it took one moment in my life and that secret day was May 3rd, 2013. It was a Friday where I looked at myself in the mirror after a serious bender and told myself, if I didn't change my way, I'll be dead within the next five years. 
death is a massive motivator, <laughs> as you can imagine, but it took a hell of a lot of courage for me to go up and make a phone call to someone that I hardly knew to hold me accountable. And I said, I need help, I need out, and I have no one to turn to. <laughs> and he said, sure. And I, and I, to this day, don't believe he said yes. But he did, and everything changed. So in that one moment, and I'm sure you've all felt this, in that one little moment where you sit there and you're like, I don't know, and you want to puke, because you're so afraid of asking for that help. But for that heartbeat moment of courage, your whole life can change. And I invite my first speaker, Carol Metz Murray, to speak about that. Do you realize that you will be dead longer than you're alive? What will you do to have you feel the way you want to feel for the rest of your life? Winston and guests, Feeling is one thing, fear is another. And I, from the very get-go, lived in a state of fear and anxiety. I couldn't figure out why, what was that all about? But in that whole process of in discovering and opening up fear and looking to find courage. Over years, I realized that that was what I had done my whole life to figure out what it was that had caused all of this fear to grab hold of my heart and close it at a very early age. Heritage Education Funds is one of Canada's RESP providers. They've worked with half a million Canadian citizens towards achieving their post-secondary education. Contact Heritage Education Funds at 604-327-1411. Surrey Honda features a large selection of previously owned vehicles. Finance and lease rates are available seven days a week. The parts and service department is only closed Sundays, and there's multilingual staff on site at Surrey Honda, 15291 Fraser Highway, one block east of 152nd. Foodie World presents Philippine Street, featuring a large selection of Filipino foods. From imported non-perishable products, to both packaged seafood and locally caught and very much alive. Foodie World is 75,000 square feet of worldly groceries situated in North Richmond. Far West Financial and Insurance Agency, offering life, health, and critical illness insurance, which covers cancer, heart attacks, and strokes. Please call Leo D for more information. Open seven days a week, Kingsgate Mall features shops for both men's and women's clothing, women's fashions and accessories, and footwear for everyone. Prescription glasses and contact lenses, as well as shopping for his and her jewelry. Kingsgate Mall on East Broadway at Kingsway. Now the core of courage is vulnerability. And everybody works with vulnerability in different ways. Whether it's emotional, or whether it's going and doing something very adventurous, or whether it's letting life pass you by. When I was five, I took my first big step of insane courage. I grew up on a farm. And part of being on the farm was helping 
So my first step of insane courage was sitting underneath a 2,000 pound cow to milk her. That was more than scary, but I got through that. When I was 11, my parents entrusted me with the farm for a weekend, and I got to milk more than one cow, while they went off to a wedding. And such was my life. I was constantly then looking for adventures. And I couldn't figure out what was driving me. I've spent most of my life in leadership. And I spent part of my life up in the Yukon. And I took a leadership course. And the first requirement was that you didn't know how to canoe. Well, if you spend any time in the Yukon and you're going to be on the rivers in the Yukon, you need to know how to canoe. But I didn't. And I went and I spent two solid weeks on the river. And one of the things that we did in the course was we had to do white water. We had to go through the white water, made it through without tipping the canoe. And yet, you know, there was something that was constantly driving me and driving me, is where is my joy? And what else do I need to do to be courageous? And life just kept on and on. And then, I realized I had gone full circle to pull out for me the deep, deep part of why I had all of this fear and anxiety as a child into a young woman, into an adult, even as I raised my children. In 2017, I had the wonderful opportunity to go on a dolphin retreat in Hawaii. And I'm sure glad I was there in 2017 and not just this past weekend. I did hear one of their sirens go off, but I'm sure this weekend there was a whole lot of anxiety going on. But when I was in Hawaii, it was a tremendously spiritual experience. And I met three practitioners there. And I decided I was going to work with one. And the question was, is, Carol, what do you want to work on? And I said, what I'd really like to work on is I want to discover what that ball is that's sitting around my heart that has kept me from deep breathing my whole life. And the question was, where do you think it comes from? And I said, I don't know. And then there was another question and another question until all of a sudden, I was back in time. And I was scared because I was back to being in vitro in my mother's womb at three months of age. And it was there at that time that I discovered and picked up that my mother didn't really want to have me. She didn't want another baby. And I picked up that fear and the anxiety. And it was interesting when I realized that I was able or perhaps my body and heart were able to let go of this ball that surrounded my heart. And suddenly, I was breathing deeply, where now I can breathe in deep into my stomach. I was blown away. And truly, I felt, I really felt sorry for my mother. 
because I then had the opportunity to look at my mother's life with this practitioner. And I also looked at my grandmother's life. And I understood the journey of where each one of them came from and where I ended up. So the part and the reason that I'm telling you this is that we never know where courage is going to come from. We never know what lies ahead of us. And I can tell you that when I discovered what I had felt all my life and what that was about, I mean, it was a huge relief. But the other part of it was then what do, where does that take me? Who am I? And then the biggest revelation hit. Because I had lived my life in fear of being rejected by everything and everybody. And so in a way, I have moved my life from the moment of conception through a tremendous amount of insane courage to get to the point of realizing that it's okay to feel rejection because now I can move that forward into what will I do to feel the joy that I want to feel. And it's just a huge unloading. I mean, let me tell you a story about some of the things that I did to find my courage as I moved forward to this step. I'll give you another story of when I was in the Yukon. I love to cross-country ski. I'm from the prairies. I learned to ski on flat land. In the Yukon, you ski on hills. Out one day, I crashed into a tree. I still have the, the indent on my leg from the tree. But the fun part of all of that, after sitting in snow and getting hypothermic, did that for three hours, when the ambulance attendant said to me, put your finger in this little machine here, we want to see what your heart rate says. And it flatlined. And he got white. And he said, do it again. So I used my other finger. And it flatlined. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm talking, but I must be dead. And yet, there was courage inside of me that said, just keep going, Carol. Just keep going. What else can you do to him? See what, what will happen. And he said, try it one more time. And I said, no, I'm not going to try it because I'm dead. It's flatlined twice. You're not getting my heartbeat. You put your finger in there. And then he fainted. And he was a paramedic. There was me. Kind of, do I laugh or don't I? Yes, I was hypothermic. I was not in a very good place. But the point of all of this is, as we're looking for our courage, as we're looking for our joy, it's all about perspective. And courage is in each and every one of us. So I invite you to step into that. And from this moment forward, do what it takes to live the joy that you deserve. Carol Metz Marie, everyone. And it's because of Carol's suggestion that I'm wearing this Wonder Bar jacket that I searched the world for for four years. Death is the only 
universal truth. So I'm going to invite you to close your eyes for just a matter of a few seconds. And as you close your eyes, I want you to connect with the breath that's incoming and the breath that's outgoing. That happens involuntarily. Could you imagine if we were responsible for our incoming and outgoing breath and we forgot? I also want you in this moment to recognize that as you take your incoming breath, there is a possibility the outgoing breath will not occur. As your outgoing breath happens, I want you to think about there's a possibility the incoming breath will not occur. So with that, I'll invite you to open your eyes again. seven days a week, located at the south end of the Patula Bridge at 12375 King George Boulevard in Surrey. Located one block north of St. Paul's Hospital, Downtown Denture Center features complete and partial teeth restoration options. With 35 years experience, Anthony Chung offers mobile services and emergency repair consultation 24 hours a day. Downtown Denture Center, just off Nelson at 970 Burrard in the lobby of the Electra Building. Welcome to Surrey Mitsubishi, Surrey's only Mitsubishi dealership. But I'm becoming a selection from all makes and models, and all trade-ins are welcome. Got to decide on financing, plus we're becoming certified warranty technicians for all your services and repairs. Matatagpuan sa 104 and 138 and at surreymitsubishi.com.